Thank you, Kevin McKidd. Thank you. Oh, so what? We actually just finished shooting our last yeah. dialogue episode. Last dialogue. We weird. just did it. So we just came from set. And now we're here in the lovely Susan Vale, our head editor's editing suite. <laughs> and we're just going to watch some of our scenes. I know. Wow. It's been six years? Oh, no. When did you come? Five. How many six, years ago? Seven, was it six eight, years? nine, ten. Yeah. So yeah. this is our sixth year together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll start from the beginning. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Susan. We have a situation, 58-year-old male, NBC. What are you doing? Who is that handsome man? He's bilateral and breast sounds. What did you do? I didn't do what he did. G.I. Joe traked him at the field. Traked right him in the field. The pin? You traked this guy with an ink pen? So? Uh, so? Move this guy inside now. Come on, let's go. Move, 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 move. Can you trake? <laughs> Leg. <laughs> I love it. You're so hot. You're so hot. Well, I gotta say, you look exactly the same. Thank you, darling. <laughs> that was she... so great. Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on. He was a man of few words in those first episodes. Um, we gave the poor guy a raging case of PTSD. Um, we made him sew himself up, which was insane. <clears throat> I'm gonna numb. Wow. <clears throat> uh, you're not numbed. So. <clears throat> Ow! Uh, ow! <laughs> That's a great. I forgot how good that scene is. That was but a fun you, scene to shoot. That was a really fun scene to shoot. Wasn't it? And I like how that it kind of it sets up, uh, obviously, an immediate attraction. Yeah. And uh, that they're both two really tough people. Yeah. At least at this point. Right. Their dynamic was very clear from the very beginning that that they were. Um, going to be formidable for one another. Do you know who you are? Do you know what's happened to you? Do you want to live this way? Now what we're looking at is 1017, and I'll say knowing that uh, I was leaving the show and the characters, I mean, these huge characters are coming apart, Kevin and I were kind of wondering halfway through the season, where are Christina and Owen going? Mm -hmm. we, were, we were a little nervous of saying, how are you going to resolve it to the writers? What is the feeling? Because mm -hmm. we've done all this work, we've put all this groundwork, where are we gonna go with it? Mm -hmm. And I remember getting, this is Stacey McKee's script, and Chandra Wilson directed it. And so when we got this script, I felt like this, and this is one of the reasons why I feel okay to leave and leave this character and leave this mm -hmm. um, work relationship and, and their relationship is because we got 1017. Mm -hmm. 1017, which was written by Stacey McKee and really one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done for the show of all time. Um, it was a really beautiful episode. 1017 for me um, was really about those sliding doors, about being able to go down these two scenarios that Christina ended up journeying through. Um, and that even though once we get to the, you know, the final moment in real time, she hasn't theoretically gone through those scenarios, somehow she's been informed by those journeys that she didn't take. I screwed up, Mayor. Mayor, I screwed up. I really screwed up. There's a moment when they've agreed to have children and you come upon Christina and she's in the park and she's pregnant and her kid's in the bouncy house with Owen. And she's just standing there and it's, you sort of just hit the shot of her. And she looks so, it's like all the color has been taken out of her. She looks so desaturated and so sad and as if she's never danced it out once in her life or hasn't done it in years, that literally the shot itself, I looked at the shot, I looked at her face, and I started to cry while watching it. And I loved the honesty of two people who are in love, who want to be together, who shouldn't be together, trying to make something work that shouldn't work. I just thought that was a really lovely way of telling that story. I felt like this is the complete circle that has nothing to do with like Seattle Grace real time. Mm -hmm. But that goes way beyond time of how our characters, how we, how we can explore every angle of what our characters 
uh, could be. Yeah. And I felt very complete. Um, this was for mm -hmm. me my Christina's finale episode with with Owen. Yeah. Well, it's weird because we've just shot today our last scene where we'll actually speak to each other, because our final scene we don't get to speak to each other. Like in a yeah. fi in a final blow that the writers have given us, they <laughs> they refuse yeah. to let Christina and Owen actually really meet in this final episode. Yeah. Um, to torture everyone just that little bit further. You know, there would have been an original plan that she was going to leave in 22, um, and I just couldn't do it, because I knew that there were things that we would miss, you know, things that we wouldn't get to do. And so 24 really became about having those moments. Um, I love the idea that we were going to leave it as unfinished business. What are you doing? I'm happy for you. People do this. Are you? Happy for me? I gotta go to the OR. Alice gave a kid an emergency thoracotomy. And I love that Meredith was tasked with the job of helping getting her out the door, which I thought was, was wonderful. And I thought um, Ellen did a wonderful job of sort of partnering her in those scenes. You and I are not finished. George is dead, and Izzy is gone, and it is supposed to be you and me and Alex, and now nothing is finished. I am not finished. You don't feel finished? because this isn't the end for you. There is no finish line. There is no end point. You just have to go. I know, I know, I know, and I, and I'm, and I keep trying to, but I don't know how to just do it. You gotta help me, Mir. It's a lovely reminder that the show is A, not about a boy. It's never been about a boy. The show has always been a love story between Meredith and Christina. You are a gifted surgeon with an extraordinary mind. Don't let what he wants eclipse what you need. He's very dreamy, but he is not the son. You are. I think it's really hard to write these characters goodbye. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think in a way where, I, it, where uh, it can be very cinematic and powerful is that you don't have them have dialogue. Absolutely. The most beautiful moment to me, other than the dancing it out, was the silent moment of saying goodbye to Owen, which was incredible and unfinished and heartbreaking and terrible and exactly as it should have been. Good, clamp. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Well, it's been an amazing ride. Don't Sandra. even talk, don't say that. <laughs> okay, sorry, I don't want to stop you from saying those things. No, I don't want you to lose your eyebrows, your eyelashes. <laughs> You've already lost your eyebrows. But, um, <laughs> but it's been such an honor to be your own Hunt, truly. And I've had the best partner that any actor could hope Stop for. Stop it. Truly. <laughs>